Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be reviewing and doing a demo for you on the brand new Viseart Shushu eyeshadow palette. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on this cute little new baby, then just keep watching. <laughs> So Vizzy Art was kind enough to send me the newest addition to their line. As you know, I'm pretty obsessed with Vizzy Art. They are one of my favorite eyeshadow brands. I definitely consider myself to be very well versed in their formula. So I was so excited to see this show up at my house. So this is the sixth addition to the Petite Pro family. So major facts about this palette first and foremost is this is the Petite Pro Shushu palette. It says on Beautylish that this is limited edition. That's the only place where I read it was limited edition, so who knows? Limited edition on Beautylish, so it is currently available on Beautylish, the Vizzy Art Paris website, and Muse Beauty Pro as well. An interesting set to me that I saw on Muse Beauty Pro, just if you're looking for some inspiration, what they're doing is they're using their Isam Pro mixing medium and using this hot pink shade and using that as a liner, and it looks really stunning. I can't wait to try that technique but they're selling an eyeliner brush this and the eyeshadow palette all in a bundle so if that is a technique that interests you definitely look into that bundle but yes you can pick this palette up in a variety of different places what I love about the petite pros is how affordable they are compared to the rest of their line now this palette is $29 which is awesome because if you are familiar with the Viseart prices this is the best way and the most affordable way to try a variety of colors from their formula without completely breaking the bank. Now the eyeshadow pans themselves are tiny. You're not getting a lot of product but it's a great way to sample eyeshadows or if you're like me and you just have an abundance of eyeshadows and will never run through anything. I love the sizes of these. The minis are perfect. I'm never going to run through them because I have so many eyeshadows so I'm all for spending less for less product. And of course with all Vizzy Art packaging the colors themselves are interchangeable. These are pans that you can take out. They're very easy. There's some holes for you to stick your fingers in there and you can switch them out from other eyeshadow palettes that they have in the size they have five other of the petite pros and they also have a larger edit palette which are the same sizes of, as these but more colors so there's a lot of options for you to pick and choose how you want so lots of options this is a really fun palette this particular palette is inspired by the coastal villages in the south of France sandy beaches cotton candy everything bright fun and summery and on Automatically, when you look at this, it is such a fun palette. First of all, it's named Shushu. That's the cutest name ever in the cutest hot pink packaging. And then, so you open it up. It's the typical Petite Pro packaging, which is really cute, tiny, sleek. And you actually have a very nice, cute little mirror. And then you reveal the eight shades. As you can see, very bright and summery. Now, I will be honest, my first initial thoughts when seeing this online, I'm not exactly moved by hot pink eyeshadow. It's just not a color that I go for very often. So this wasn't screaming at me. But now that I see it in person, I just think of summer and it is a really gorgeous palette and honestly it's not as pink as you really think It's just those pink bright colors really stand out to you But if you cover these two shadows, this actually is like a peachy beachy kind of warm palette Which is very wearable so not as intimidating as it looks if you're like me and you're not so into pink colors So as I stated before there are eight shades in this palette in here You are getting four mattes two shimmers one metallic and one duochrome shade as far as initial swatches went with this palette, what I did notice overall is this is a drier formula, which is not out of the ordinary for Viseart. So though it's not a super creamy formula like some of their shadows do have, you would know that their drier formula also is extremely good as well. The only shade in here that I noticed that was extremely creamy was the metallic shade right here, Icy. The other ones are a bit more dry, but they still are workable. I actually am very impressed with how the mattes washed a lot of times, especially with these brighter shades. You'll notice from other brands they are a lot more chalky. Though they are more dry, they're not chalky. They pack on full pigmentation with swatch and the only shade that I noticed was a little bit more flaky was this hot pink shade right here, Cotton Candy. It was more flaky and I did notice with application on the eye as well that did translate. So this shade itself is going to need to use a little bit more work to work it into the skin but it is really stunning and once you kind of work it in it actually sticks very well. It's very pigmented with a lot of pigmentation and also I did notice from Sangria. I swatched these 
these after I used them and I was actually surprised with how not as vibrant the shade was. I was expecting it to be really creamy full of pigmentation. It's not. It's actually a softer shade. So the drier formula makes it more soft on the eye as well as swatching. So upon swatch, this isn't that eye-catching, but it's the middle shade right here and I really love how it's like a soft orange shade. I think it's really beautiful. Overall, this palette did swatch fine. I just noticed that sometimes some of their palettes, you'll notice that the shadows and the shimmers and the mattes are significantly more creamier than others. Just because this isn't as creamy doesn't mean it's not good. It's actually a very good palette and application was wonderful with these. Just wanted you to be aware of the texture and how it does feel. So quickly, let's talk about the color story here. You are getting really bright pops and like I said, that's kind of what you notice immediately when you see the palette. But honestly, when you really dig in, you actually can get some quite neutral looks if you're using these shades. You have two more neutral matte shades and two brighter shades. With this palette, you aren't going to get a lot of depth with your eye look. As you can see, I have really no depth, but that's not what this palette is about. It's about bright, fun, summery eyes. So though you aren't going to get too much depth with this palette, you're going to get a lot of brightness and pigmentation. And all of these mattes were beautiful. They blended beautifully on the skin and I was very impressed with how the bright shades worked on my eyelid. You'll see that pigmentation was immediately there right away and it blended with ease, no chalkiness. It didn't blend away. They built beautifully. They blended beautifully together. So mattes overall are a thumbs up, especially with these neon shades. Definitely very impressed with how they worked. Two of the plain shimmers are right here and I would say probably not the Z Art's best work but they are so beautiful so it's okay they still work I think you're going to get the best payoff and glimmer on the eyelid if you either use finger a wet shadow or a sticky base I didn't really use any of that today and I did have some fallout and I did kind of pack it on and have to go in with a finger but I did notice that this shade especially is a little bit more soft than I was expecting it to be and that's not a bad thing I was just expecting more but honestly it's very pretty in the soft way that it is and I know what a lot of you guys would appreciate that and you aren't into these super bright metallics so it's this is more of a soft shade and then cotton candy right here is the flakiest of this entire palette so just be aware of that it's not extremely flaky to the point where it's unworkable it still is really nice but I did have to kind of press it into my eyelid a little more than I would have some other shades and brush the fallout away but there are ways to make that experience better if you just use a wet brush use your finger or a sticky base. Slight learning curve with this color, but it is stunning. You have one duochrome shade right here. This is Sorbet. It has a peach base to it and then it has kind of this golden green duochrome shift to it. What I really like about this shade is it's not obnoxious. It actually has quite a natural shade. I have that on the inner corner of my eye right now. It blends into my skin but then you get that beautiful duochrome shift. It's a softer shade but it's perfect for summer. This all over the eyelid alone is going to be beautiful for just a little fun pop in the summer. And then the last shade that we have here is Icy. Now I feel like this color is a bit out of place compared to the rest of the storyline. Even for the look that I was doing today, I kind of struggled with what I wanted to do with it. I used it as my inner corner color. I don't know, I'm sure I can come up with looks where I can get the silver to fit in, but as far as the rest of the theme goes here, I wish they would have replaced it with maybe like something blue or something a little bit more summery than silver, but nonetheless, it's a really good shade. The quality of it is incredible. It's a little bit more of a creamy formula because it is that metallic, and you'll see in my tutorial that it just like was beaming on my inner corner. Overall, quality of this, very good if you couldn't tell that I'm enjoying it. So what I'm going to do next is go into the tutorial of how I got this eye look. It was very easy to come up with. These colors, with the exception of the IC, are extremely cohesive. It didn't take too hard of a time to think of what look I wanted to do. The next look that I want to do is I want to just use the two hot pink colors because I think you can get an insane monochromatic hot pink look. I wouldn't say this palette has a ton of potential to create a billion different types of fun and creative looks, but it is only an eight pan little palette and it definitely makes creating looks a lot easier if you find yourself feeling a little bit more overwhelmed when you have bigger palettes and struggle with creating looks. These little petite pros are awesome for kind of laying out the looks for you. So let's get into this tutorial. So I've already primed my eyes with the Vizzy Art Eye Primer and it is time to dig in. First shade we're using is Sandcastle. We got a lot of kickback 
with Sandcastle, but it's pretty much like a beige skin tone color, or at least it's my skin tone, so I'm just going to use this to set underneath the brow. I really like when palettes contain a color like this because it allows you to set your eyelid, or even sometimes if you want to do a really cool skin tone lid, I love shades like that. Very happy they have that. All over transition shade today, we're going into Cream Sickle. This is a classic MAC 224 brush, a brush many of us have in our collection from 10 years ago, <laughs> but it's still going strong. It's a little scratchy, just like that, just to have a little orange pop underneath the colors we are going to put on top. We're going to start off bright with Melon. This is an Isum S33 and I'm going to pop it into the inner half of my crease and as you can see instant pigmentation with this color it's amazing. If you really want that bright neon pop you can put like a white base underneath but without a white base underneath as you can see it is still extremely vibrant. It's pretty much doing the work for me so this shade definitely impressed me. Next we're going into Popsicle. This is a Refer number 14 brush and I'm very impressed with this shade because it's actually a lot more neon than I thought it looked in the pan. And a lot of times with hot pink shades like these with other brands, you find that this color is really chalky and even if you get this pigmentation, it kind of goes away. I don't find that with this shade. They definitely did a really nice job with the quality. It's easy to blend, it's not patchy, and most importantly, it's not chalky. To work on the lower lash line, I'm taking the Morphe and Jeffree Star JS712 and I'm taking Melon, which is that first crease shade that we use. And now we're going back in with Popsticle which is the hot pink. I'm going to blend these two together. They blend together quite seamlessly. I'm taking my P. Louise base and I'm going to create a half cut crease. So first we're going to be taking Sorbet, which is that peach duochrome shade with a refer number three brush. I'm going to pack this into the inner corner What's interesting about this shade is it's a very, very soft peach, so it almost looks like your skin tone has a duochrome to it. It's very unique, very natural, but also a really cool duochrome effect. Next, we're going into Sangria. This is an Isum W21. Be careful with these shimmers because I do find there are some fallout to them. They are a drier shimmer formula. You'll find that they probably apply better with a finger or with a wet brush. I'm using a dry brush right now just because I'm not going for crazy intensity, but just be careful for fallout. Taking the same brush, but it's a different one. I'm gonna go into Cotton Candy and I'm gonna pop this right into the rest of the lid. Now this blends in perfectly with the popsicle shade, which is the matte hot pink. So if you're looking for an all hot pink eye, all you need is popsicle and cotton candy, but that's really pretty. And this is a shade that definitely has the most fallout and I would say would benefit from being applied with a finger or on top of a sticky base. And then finally, normally I wouldn't do this, but the only shade I have not used is Icy. And this is a metallic finish, so I find it's a lot more pigmented and creamy me than the other shimmers. As you can see, the intensity of that is insane. So I'm actually going to try and subdue that. That's an incredible silver. All right, so I'm going to finish the rest of my face, but that's the look. And here is the final look with lashes and lips. If you are curious about anything that I am wearing, it will be down below in the description box. Side note, I just purchased these new Ardell naked lashes. The ones I'm wearing are 421. These are like my new favorite everyday lashes. They're like $4 and they're so layered and have so much dimension to them, but they still look like lash extensions. I don't know. Really, really nice. Oh my gosh. I want to try more of these. But anyways, this is the final look. Overall, this palette is fantastic for the summer. I know it's only March, but this makes me excited to play with pinks and oranges and like peachy popsicle kind of colors for the summer. I can definitely see myself rocking this. Even if I don't really like pink shadows, which I don't, this makes me excited to wear pink shadows. So that says a lot about this palette. So overall, Vizzy Art did a very nice job with this palette once again. They do have five others of these little babies if there is a color scheme that speaks to you more. But if you are looking into Vizzy Art, as I always say, these are a great way to 
to go and this one it did not disappoint so if this color story speaks to you and you are interested in purchasing Viseur I definitely give this a thumbs up and my stamp of approval so, anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this review I know you guys have been asking if I was going to review it thank you guys so much for watching this video if you aren't subscribed to my channel make sure you take the time to do so I have a lot of fun videos that I'm going to put up for these next few weeks that I will be at home and yeah we're just gonna take a break from everything that's going on in the world distract ourselves with makeup so I'm excited about that and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one